Do you have a ball python that's a picky eater? You've watched my other videos on how to get your ball python to eat, but you still want more? Well, guess what, mister? Or, or missus. This video's for you. I apologize, I shouldn't have assumed gender. Welcome to The Green Room, I'm Bob Bledsoe. You know, I'd love to tell you that everything goes perfectly here in The Green Room, and I never have problems getting my snakes to eat, because I have a YouTube channel. But honesty is important to me with this channel, and that wouldn't be an honest statement. The fact is, I have several picky eaters. Now, I don't want to call out specific individuals because I'm not into feed shaming. But it's these ones. Today's video isn't about how I feed or even all the tricks that you can do to get your ball python to eat. I have videos on those already, although I might do an updated video on that. Let me know if you want to see an updated video on just all the general feeding stuff and maybe I'll put one together. But what today's video is, is just going over the specific things that I'm doing right now to get those four picky eaters to eat. We're going to find out what's working occasionally for some of those snakes and maybe it'll give you some ideas. Human body parts. What? That's how you'll get them to eat all the time. They prefer live humans, but... And Kent, where would you get these body parts? I don't know. Hospital? Morgue? Theme park? Appreciate your input, Kent. Thanks. Here to help. I don't feed human body parts. I feed frozen thawed rodents, and I get them from Lane Labs. I've tried a bunch of the other rodent suppliers, most of whom are just fine, but I found Lane Labs to be the cleanest, most well-packed rodents. So because of that, about 90% of my orders over the last probably two years or so have been Lane Labs. The box always shows up really well packed, super insulated, packed in dry ice, and the rodents are always more frozen than they ever are in my freezer. Because they're my favorite rodent supplier and I've been buying from them for a long time, I'm really proud to announce that Lane Labs is a new channel sponsor for Green Room Pythons. We even have a discount code for you. Anytime you purchase from Lane Labs, you can plug in the code GRP10 and get 10% off your order. Really proud to have them on board. Hey, that was a pun that I just said. Actually, happy to have them on board because they're actually going to be on the board later. You're going to see that. And then, the so that is a pun. Anywho, I have 19 ball pythons here in the green room. And out of those, there are four that give me trouble. Now, I'm not counting the snakes that are in breeding season because that's a separate issue. But outside of breeding season, all my other snakes eat immediately. So that's 80%. 80% of my ball pythons eat just fine. 20% I have a problem with. I'm saying this just so that you know, this is not a problem with all ball pythons. We do hear about it a lot, but the vast majority eat just fine. Every individual snake is different, and the trick is to figure out how they want to be fed. Now, if this was a complete video on how I feed and, and how to get your snakes to eat, the first thing I would say is check your husbandry. We'd talk about that. Then we'd talk about all the conventional tricks to get your snake to eat. But we're just focusing on these snakes right now, and sometimes you have to go unconventionally. So let's talk about what I'm doing. Let me say this really quick before I get started. Look how pretty Molly Malone is when she's in deep shed. This is basically what she would look like if she was hypo, and she's pos het for hypo, so I hope she proves out, because an ultra melon shed is really cool. Anyway, Molly was a great eater when she was young, and then she became super picky. And I started to get her to take a good sized meal about once a month uh, using Da Vinci Boa, which is this stuff here. This is just vitamins and it helps boost their appetite. So I was giving her Da Vinci Boa occasionally and I was giving her an electrolyte soak occasionally. And that seemed to work. That, that got her eating uh, food more regularly at least. She still was refusing, but uh, that worked okay. It got her eating enough. And I haven't used that on her for a while because I early in the season, like I guess uh, November, I paired her with Captain Farrell because I was hoping, this was kind of a risk, but I was hoping that pairing her would bump her appetite up a little bit. And I was just going to do it the one time to see if that worked at all. And it did. It seemed to work. So uh, she's eating pretty decently now. She'll still skip a week occasionally, but for the most part, she takes a weekly meal. And so I've continued pairing her and Captain Farrell, and I hope that she goes for me this 
this year. Pairing a snake up to get them to eat, again, is risky, and I wouldn't necessarily recommend that unless you really know what you're doing, and unless your snake is at least very close to that 1500 gram mark, which she was at the time. So the other thing I do with Molly, if she seems interested but isn't striking, is I'll take the, the thawed rodent and I'll press it up against her neck, because she'll be kind of in this position, checking it out, she's super interested, she's just not taking it. If I press it up against her neck, a lot of times she'll start pushing against it and kind of wrestle with it a little bit, and then eventually she'll strike and wrap. And I've gotten her to eat a number of times that way, and that actually works with a couple of my snakes. With most of the snakes, though, if you try and do that, it'll just scare them. So give it a try once. If, it, if they take the bait and they start kind of pushing against it, uh, then it's working. You'll know immediately if it's not working, if it just scares them and they retreat. So it's worth giving a try because I have, I think, three snakes that have taken meals that way. By the way, I've been seeing in the comments that there are a bunch of new people that are finding the channel. Uh, if you're new, check to see, or even if you're not new, check to make sure that you're subscribed. Because I think a lot of times people think they're subscribed because YouTube shows them my videos because they watch my videos, but that doesn't necessarily mean you're subscribed. So hit the subscribe button if you would. It does me a big favor because it helps the channel grow and then YouTube pushes it out to more people. So, and then of course hitting the like button also helps making comments, stuff like that. But um, check if you're subscribed. All right, let's not make this about me. Tiger Lily here was such a great eater for a while. You can see me in old videos talking about her saying that she's never missed a meal. Well, she started missing meals and it didn't bother me because she was a big girl and that she's totally fine missing some meals, but she's been missing meals for a while now uh, or being spotty at least with, with eating for a while now. And she's another one that that trick works to sometimes put the rodent up against her neck as long as she's interested. If her head's up and she's tongue flicking, rodent goes against her neck, she will uh, sometimes then wrap. The other thing for her at least, there's about a 50% chance that she won't eat that meal after she's wrapped it if I give it to her that way. But it sometimes works. But lately she's been interested in mice, so I've been giving her jumbo mice. She's eaten the last two weeks in a row jumbo mice. Last week she had two. So the plan for her next feeding is to give her a jumbo mouse and when she's waiting for the second one I'm gonna give her a weaned rat that's scented with a mouse. A weaned rat is a little bit bigger than a jumbo mouse usually but they're about the same size. So if that works, the plan for the following week will be to just offer her a rat that's been scented with a mouse. And if she takes that, then the following week I can just go with the a, a rat and hopefully she'll be eating again. That won't necessarily work, but that's, that's the plan. The other thing is, uh, it's kind of a double-edged sword that I'm offering her meals every week. Uh, a snake at this size, you know, if they're eating well, they don't need to eat every week you know, 10 to 14 days would be a good feed schedule for her, but I'm trying to get her taking some meals in a row and getting used to eating again. So that's a bit risky. It might be that I try to feed her on day seven and she's just not ready to take a meal yet. So I may decide later that I need to space out the offerings. Before I talk about Lucille and the crazy ways I've been getting her to eat, let's see what's happening in Kent's Corner. Hi, welcome to Kent's Corner, the best thing you've ever seen. I was asked, to apologize to my brother for last week's Kent's Corner. My mom thought that I was being super rude to him, and I was. <laughs> it was pretty awesome. It was like it was like a diss track if I was a rapper. I should be a rapper. I'd be really good at that. I'd go after like probably run DMC. I'd be all psh, nice Adidas, you know, and like Andre 3000. Take that guy on. I'd be all like. Like, probably, like, you know, sucks, <laughs> something like that, you know, but in a rap form. Oh, man, I should go write some bars. Th thank you for watching Kent's Corner. I'm going to write bars. Nice apology, Kent. Oh, right, shoot. Sorry. Sorry. Hey, let's take a look at this secret society known as the Horde of Keepers. This is a really cool snake keeping community. It is a very secret society, but you are invited to join. All you have to do is go to patreon.com slash greenroompythons. There are four different tiers, and you can check those out and see the different benefits for each tier. And, uh, oh man, I can't see. And then, you know, figure out which tier you want to be on. You know, I always say that the Horde of Keepers is what's keeping this channel going. 
which is true. But they're also helping me to produce some different content that's going to be out later this year that requires travel and such like that. So these guys are really appreciated. Hey, check out the channel sponsors board. I added discount codes to them so you don't have to go looking in the description of the video for a discount code. Anyway, thanks to Black Box Cages and Lane Labs for their support of the channel. Look at this pretty girl. Those of you who watch my channel know that this is Lucille and she is my mouser. She generally only eats mice and she's gotten to this size doing so, which might tell you a little bit about the nutritional value of mice, but we're not gonna talk about that. Uh, we're gonna talk about the weird ways that I've gotten her to eat. So when I first got her, she wouldn't take food for a very long time and I finally got her to take a live mouse. So she ate a live mouse the first week, the next week she took a frozen thawed mouse and then she was basically back on food but still skipping a lot. More recently, she had been off food for a while and I needed to try something different with her because nothing was working. So I had this weird idea that she, Lucille free roams a lot and she likes to do that. And I thought, what if she, what if she got out and she was just loose in the house and a mouse came running by or a rat or anything, she'd probably eat it, you know? So I thought, let me just, let me just try that. So I let her free, thought, I thought out a mouse, let her go, and she wandered around, and she eventually went behind the mirror and started to settle. As soon as she went back there, I took some very long tongs and ran a, my, a, a mouse in there, and she took it immediately. So that was great, it made me feel really good. The next week, I did it again, and she took two mice. Now, let me say this. Uh, this is not me advocating for moving a snake to feed. This is very different. Sometimes, you know, the, the general rule, or not rule, but the general idea is that sometimes snakes will eat if you put them in like a closed paper bag, like a baby. You can put them in a closed ba paper bag with a meal, and sometimes they'll eat that way or a box or something like that. And this is kind of that same uh, situation. Also, Lucille doesn't ever stress when I, when I uh, pick her up. And so what's happening is she's taking her meal and then I wait till she's settled and I move the mirror and pick her up gently and just put her back in her tub and she does just fine. Eat that way or box. Wow. Hi folks, future Bob here. You know, sometimes past Bob has a thing in his head and then he says a thing and he thinks that he's made the point that was in his head and he hasn't, which normally would be really funny, except I have to edit these videos. So, the point that Past Bob was trying to make is that there is a belief, usually with newer keepers and for some reason pet store people, I don't know why they still think this, that snakes will become cage aggressive so you should feed them in separate containers. And that is not a thing. Don't move your snake to feed if you think that they're going to become cage aggressive. You can hook train or tap train your snake if you need to do that. In this situation where Past Bob is using it as a trick to get a snake to eat is a little bit different. But here's what happened. So she took the one mouse, and then the next week, two mice. And then the next week, I tried it again. I gave her a mouse. And oh, no, 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 I didn't give her a mouse. I just gave her a medium rat. I offered her a medium rat. And she took it immediately. It's the first time she's ever taken a medium rat. So I thought I had unlocked the code. Except then she never took another meal behind the mirror again. So that stopped working. Uh, so what's been working recently... She didn't, she didn't go completely off food. She would just take meals in her, in her tub, uh, you know, occasionally, but still skipping. But what I've been doing recently is offering, not, not letting, not having her come out of her hide or not removing the hide when I go to feed her. I open the, the, she's always in her hide. So I open the tub and I just put the mouse into her hide and she takes it. So that's been working with her recently. I don't think I'm ever going to unlock a code with her though. I think some stuff works for a little while and then I got to find something else. You just have to be creative, right? Crazy girl. I almost forgot to mention this. Lucille has also in the past occasionally taken a dropped meal. And that means that it's the end of the night. I've fed everybody. She won't take a meal and I got something left over. So I'm just going to leave it in her tub overnight. And sometimes about 50% of the time when I open that tub in the morning, the rodent is gone. So that's something that a number of my snakes do. Damara does that a lot. She'll take drop meals easily. So that's a really good one to try, especially if you have a rodent that you're gonna throw out anyway. Just leave it in their enclosure overnight and see if they'll take it. 
I usually leave it either on a Tupperware lid as a plate or an upturned hide or just on top of the hide. I just don't want it sitting, you know, I don't want substrate sticking to it as it's sitting there. Here's my most challenging eater. This is Evie, my vanilla het sunset. And I believe that she hit her thousand gram wall at about 800 grams and she's still at the wall. For those of you who don't know, the thousand gram wall is just this idea that female ball pythons sometimes will go off food at about a thousand grams. And some people think that it might be like practice for when they're breeding next season or something like that. Uh, you know, it's not a scientifically proven thing, but it is relatively common for females to go off food around a thousand grams. And she was at about 800 grams, I think, when, when that happened. And uh, she still, she'll take food occasionally. She's not completely off food. Uh, I got her to start taking meals about once a month when I was doing the Da Vinci supplement and the electrolyte soaks. I haven't done that for a while with her, but I think I might, I might start again. She'll occasionally do the thing where I can push food up against her neck, but she has to be interested in the food and she's not usually interested in the food. Uh, but but she'll she'll take a meal that way if she's interested. I'm gonna try changing her substrate to paper. I've never done that before, but I'm gonna try that this week just to see if the change in scenery kicks her appetite in. This is a tough one because she's never taken a live meal before and she's never taken a mouse for me before. So I can't try a different type of prey item. I mean, I guess I could try a bird or something like that. I haven't done that. But uh, the only thing that she has ever struck is a frozen thawed rat. So this is a challenge. I'm not, I'm not concerned with breeding her at this point. Like there's no rush to breed her. Uh, if, she's, if she's got the body condition next season, then we'll do it. If not, then we'll wait. Here's an honorable mention that I think is important to talk about. Delilah here, I count as one of the best eaters in the green room. She eats every time, strikes fast, no problem unless anything in her environment changes. I've tried to upgrade her enclosure, I've tried to upgrade her hides, and she stops eating. So what's happened recently is the entire rack that she's in has moved across the room. So she didn't change positions or anything, nothing changed inside her tub, but she just moved across the room. And that's caused her to stop eating. She'll take a mouse if I, give her, if, if I offer her a mouse, uh, because I think she just can't resist those, but She's, you know, I'm, wait, I'm waiting for her to get used to where she is before she starts eating strongly again. So the important thing to talk about here is that a change in the environment, change of substrate, um, even just moving the, the tubs around could cause your snake to go off food, or it could do the opposite. It could get a non-eating snake to eat again. So you could try that. If you have a snake that's not eating, you could try moving something around, changing around their enclosure. Uh, to, to see if that'll work. Like I mentioned, I'm going to try to put Evie on paper this week to see if that works, but it does the opposite too. And it definitely has for this one, right? We got to get you eating some rats. You need rats in your belly, mama. This is definitely the most frustrating part about keeping ball pythons. It just takes a lot of patience and trial and error. And there are a ton of tricks that you can do to get snakes back eating. I just wanted to talk about what I'm going through right now and what's working for me or what I'm trying right now with my actual snakes that are picky eaters. You wanna see one of those other feeding videos that I was talking about? Take a look at this one. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next week. Let's get a rat in your belly. Can we get a rat in your belly, please? Can we do that? That'd be great.